With the war in Europe over, the British in Canada soon found themselves with nearly 18,000 men available for combat. The British commander in Canada, General Prevost, decided on an attack through Lake Champlain. Commanding the Lake Champlain area was General Izard. Commanding naval forces was Lieutenant Thomas McDonough. Izard was soon ordered to the Niagara front with 4,000 men, leaving General Alexander Maycomb in charge with only 1,500 men. McDonough had been busy throughout, building a navy that included his flagship, the Saratoga, containing eight long guns and 18 carronades, the Ticonderoga, the Preval, and finally the Eagle. The British were not idle, building a fleet that included the Confiance with 31 long and six short guns. One week after Izard's departure, on August 29th, the British began moving south. The New York militia called for its men to fall out in mass, but only 700 did. They harassed the British advance, but could do little more. On September 6th, General Maycomb sent two detachments of regulars, each with 200 men, to delay the British. This they did, falling back in good order. Finally, the British neared the main American position on a line south of the Saranac River. The Americans had removed the planks on the bridge over the river, and the British were unable to cross. At the same time, they came under fire from both effectively positioned American ground cannons, as well as American ships in the harbor. Prevost thus decided to wait until the arrival of British naval vessels to support the assault. In the meantime, American reinforcements were arriving in the form of 2,000 Vermont volunteers. McDonough's was in the meantime preparing for battle. He decided to fight the battle from Anchorage in Plattsburgh Bay. He placed his ships in position so that the British would not be able to anchor at a distance and take advantage of their superiority in long-range guns. Further, he placed lines and anchors into positions that would allow him to turn the ships if necessary. On the morning of September 11th, the British fleet, commanded by Captain George Downey, arrived. The fleet consisted of 16 vessels, with confidence by far the greatest. The British fleet had a combined tonnage of 2,402 tons with 937 men aboard and could throw a broadside of 1,192 pounds. The American fleet of 14 vessels had a combined tonnage of 2,444 tons with 882 men and could throw a broadside of 1,194 pounds. As the British approached, they came under withering fire from the American ships. They came along the American ships, and the Confians unleashed a full broadside against the Saratoga. An American shot knocked a British gun from its carriage, and this hit and killed Captain Downey. The British first lost the Chubb, whose control was lost. Then the American lost the Preble. By this time, the American ships were severely damaged, and all of the Saratoga's starboard guns were silenced. McDonough then ordered the ships to be brought around as he had arranged in advance. The Constance was unable to do the same and was wrapped in such a broadside that she struck her colors. Soon the Linnet also surrendered and the Finch went out of control. By 10.30 the battle was won. It was the most important naval battle of the war. For once Prevost learned of the defeat, he ordered the withdrawal back to Canada. The invasion was over. Lieutenant McDonough's small fleet had single-handedly stopped it.